Hey everyone, welcome back to The Dabbler's Den. I'm Chris Cottrell, and today's video is a direct response to my previous video on the Paleo-Atlantic shorelines and how they relate to the Carolina Bays. Uh, there were a lot of questions, um, obviously probably not one of my most popular theories or ideas, um, and I just wanted to go ahead and, and, and touch on some of the, the main ideas here uh, and, and then kind of look at them in closer detail using Google Earth. So uh, let me just go ahead and quickly scoot forward a little bit. Uh, the, the main topic or the main idea here, and, and this really helps, do, you know, really does help show uh, the relationship between paleo shorelines and elevation, and then we'll relate those to the Carolina Bays. Uh, and basically, uh, this is actually from, from Georgia, it's a cross section um, going from point A to this point right here. Uh, and you can see the elevation change going down to the current sea level, to the current shoreline. Uh, but it hasn't always been that way. A million years ago, right here, a million years ago, this was the shoreline um, of the East Coast. And everything to the west of here was affected by ocean water. Now, I don't necessarily want to say that it was completely being worked over by wave action and, and things like that. Um, but it was being affected by seawater uh, in some way, whether it be an estuary uh, system or a beach. Um, but regardless, from this point all the way to the coast was affected by, by ocean water. Every, everything under 69 feet uh, in elevation, in current elevation above sea level. Uh, 400,000 years ago, this point right here uh, was the, you know, the shoreline of the time. Uh, and anything under 42 feet and below would have been affected by the ocean 400,000 years ago. And then this point right here uh, at 30 feet above our current sea level, um, this was affected by ocean water. Anything under that, 125,000 years ago. Uh, so basically, we're looking at three steps um, over the past one million years where the areas that we we call our current coastline were directly affected by the seas, the rising seas. Uh, and again, that was 1 million years ago, 400,000 years ago, and 125,000 years ago. And the elevations, 69 feet, 42 feet, and 30 feet. And these all become very important when we start looking at the Google Earth. So let's go ahead and, and remove this. And we will look at Google Earth. Now, obviously, mine might look a little bit different than yours. I've got a lot going on here. Uh, but I'm just going to kind of scoot in to where we were looking at the other day. Um, and it was this area right here. And again, one of the reasons why I chose this area uh, is because we're actually, we actually see a coastline that's being currently affected by the rising seas of the past 10,000 years or so. Really, really about the past 6,000 years. Uh, and it's been pretty steady since then. So we actually see an area of coastline that is currently being eroded where we actually do find very well well formed Carolina Bays. And so I'm going to scoot in here again. Um, if and, and I'm using the um, the elevation meter that's here on Google Earth. It's not the best, um, but it kind of gives you a, a good idea. If you were going to look at this in more detail, you should probably break out, you know, geological survey maps and things like that. But uh, for what we're doing, you know, this kind of helps give us a good idea of, of what we're looking at. Uh, and so now keep in mind that everything in this area is under that 69 foot in elevation level. So everything in this area a million years ago was being affected by ocean water. Uh, again, whether it be an estuary system or a beach system, something, uh, the ocean was affecting that area. So everything here that we see in the terrain has to be younger than 1 million years. And that includes all of these really well-defined Carolina Bays. And I do want to kind of go back and forth between the LIDAR and the regular Google Earth, just so we can see what we're dealing with here. Again, this is the Myrtle Beach area. Uh, here's Myrtle Beach right down here. Uh, and this is the, the beach going north from Myrtle Beach. Uh, and very, you know, this is a very heavily populated area. You know, a lot of tourism, you know, a lot of beach access. Uh, you know, a lot of people visit Myrtle Beach every single year. Uh, and just down the road, you know, we have these, you know, very well-defined Carolina Bays all over the place. Um, again, one of the reasons I chose this for this particular study. In future videos, I'll probably go to other locations up or down the beach just to look at the same thing. 
uh, and draw those connections. But yeah, we could definitely see some really well-defined Carolina bays here. And when we click on back on the LIDAR, it really pops out and it shows you the elevation differences that we see here. Um, so again, uh, 1 million years ago, this whole area would have been affected by coastal water. So coast, coastal water. Uh, so everything that we see here was formed after that, after 1 million years. Um, now we can also see, again, based on these color differences, uh, different changes or sudden changes in elevation. Now these represent old shorelines uh, or areas that were affected by ocean water um, at different times. Uh, and we can really kind of see it if we go to the north part of this, of this area um, where everything right here, everything above it or everything over here um, was exposed or has been exposed for the past 1 million years. But 400,000 years ago, the seas came up to this area that we see right here. Uh, so this was a shoreline of some kind. It could be the backside of an estuary, the backside of a, of a barrier island. Um, but it was being affected by tidal water. Uh, we probably had a shallow marine uh, uh, saltwater estuary here. And, um, and But we still see a bunch of Carolina bays. And, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But all of these bays here that have been exposed for the past 1 million years are very well-defined bays. And again, if I just click off of it, you could see that these are very well you know, they have all the characteristics of a Carolina Bay. Um, no one would dispute that at all. Um, but my, but what I'm trying to show here is that they're very well defined over 42 feet in elevation. Uh, anything under 42 feet in elevation, any bays that we find under 42 feet in elevation um, are heavily eroded, uh, including these over here. Uh, you know, if I just scroll down, um, we can obviously see that these are Carolina bays, but they are heavily eroded. Um, and you can also see that we have another shoreline right here on the top. This is right at 30 feet, right at around 30 feet. This was the shoreline that we had 125,000 years ago. And in this particular area, you know, that, that sea that was 30 feet higher than today did affect these bays in this area, you know, including this, this whole um, system right here was affected 125,000 years ago. Nowadays, uh, maybe during some extremely high tides, but, but I, I don't think that that's even a possibility. This is, you know, drainage at this point. Um, but 125,000 years ago, the seas were affecting this area, um, as, as it being a, probably a salt marsh or something like that at the time. Um, so again, bays that are above 42 feet, very well defined. Bays that are between 30 feet and 42 feet are heavily eroded, and there are hardly any bays at all under 30 feet. So, and again, that was the last time the oceans rose higher than they are today. They rose 30 feet higher, nine meters higher than they are today. So somewhere between 27 and 30 feet. We can also see if we go down to the actual beach today, there are some Carolina bays here. And again, uh, this right here would have been the the western side of a barrier island or the leeward side of a barrier island, a uh, sea, seaward side being this side, the leeward side being the other side. Uh, and they're obviously they were Carolina bays. They are Carolina bays, but they are extremely heavily eroded. Uh, and again, they are between, most of these are between 30 feet and 42 feet, meaning that 400,000 years ago, these were under the ocean water, but they weren't under the ocean water 125,000 years ago when sea level rose 30 feet. Uh, so they, and, and I don't know how long the, the peaks of those interglacial periods were. Um, I'm sure we can kind of, you know, I'm sure that we can kind of refine that a little bit. Um, but I am unaware of, of that at this time. Uh, I'll, all I know is that this area right here is above 30 feet and we have Carolina bays that are heavily, heavily eroded. There are no Carolina bays in this area under 30 feet. Again, they were also, not only were they washed over by seas 400,000 years ago, but they were also washed over by seas 125,000 years ago during the Eemian. So, so these areas right here are very heavily eroded, um, while these that have been exposed for the past 1 million years, uh, at least the terrain of the land has been, uh, they are very well defined. Um, some of the other things that I pointed out or I want to point out here is that we also have areas where our current coastal line, our current beach line, 
has has actually eroded away at some Carolina bays. Here's two Carolina bays right here that have been heavily worked over and eroded by the actual ocean, by the ocean washing, you know, washing into them and cutting away, cutting away the shoreline. Uh, there's another really good example if we move up the coast just a little bit. And let's get there. Here we go. Uh, so here, here are two really well-defined, not, I'm sorry, they're not well-defined because they're almost completely eroded. Um, but this area right here between the current sea level of zero and about 15 to 20 feet um, or 16 feet, it looks like, uh, that whole area has completely almost erased these two Carolina bays. That's kind of important. You know, again, this, this is showing the process that, that the bays can be eroded away by coastal processes. Uh, just north of that, you know, we see this area right here. That's the Carolina Bay. There's a couple other ones. Um, very, very, very heavily eroded. Uh, and again, that's between that 30 feet and that 42 feet that we we're discussing. Uh, here's a couple other really good examples of some bays that were really well defined, but now are extremely heavily eroded uh, based or due to the past paleo shorelines due to the past sea level rises uh, that have affected these very well shaped, well defined Carolina bays. Uh, and to the, to the point where they are almost completely gone. This one right here actually has the intercoastal way going right through it. Um, so, so these are areas that have been completely, um, completely worked, worked over by the sea, not just once uh, or at least once, um, but probably not twice. Uh, so yeah, you can see these areas here where they're very well defined, but uh, definitely have been worked over by the ocean uh, at least once. But again, you go back up here, and these bays are very, very well defined, and they have not been exposed to ocean water uh, since their creation, really. Um, you know, both 400,000 years ago, this area was dry, as well as um, 125,000 years ago, this area was dry. And we find really well defined Carolina Bay. See areas under that, um, you know, this is again a really good example of, of an estuary system where sea levels would have wrote you know they they rose in this area again this area right here would have been the the high tide mark um but this wasn't really exposed to flowing ocean water it wasn't exposed to hurricane waves and things like that um, tides yes um you know we have eight foot tides on the east coast here in this part of of the world uh and so we have you know twice a day we have an influx of ocean water that comes in and out but it's not really an active um, erosion feature. It's just water coming in and then it goes back out. Water comes in, it goes back out. And this is what creates these drainage areas like this, which a lot of these Carolina bays, you know, kind of show that drainage uh, coming, coming away from them, which helped cause that erosion. But regardless, again, this just really helps show that the paleo shorelines, um, especially in this part of the world, did affect the terrain. And, you know, we can use the erosion patterns of the Carolina Bays to help identify when they occurred. Uh, and so based on what I'm seeing here, uh, you know, this would eliminate the Carolina Bays as being part of a Younger Dryas event, part of an event that happened, you know, 12 to 13,000 years ago. Um, you know, that's when these bays might have been being, these bays right here, you know, might have been being filled in over the past, you know, 10,000 years or so. Um, but as far as these bays, you know, all over here, uh, this is basically showing us that the bays have to have been formed somewhere between 1 million years when all of this area was covered in ocean and 400,000 years when everything around here was covered in ocean with the exception of this area right here. You know, again, where we see a lot of those well-defined Carolina bays. Uh, again, I just wanted to, to kind of highlight these things, kind of show them um, using Google Earth so that we can kind of get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to go to a couple other locations uh, in future videos just to kind of point this out. There are some really good um, locations up and down the East Coast. Uh, one of those happens to be the Delmarva Peninsula, and I actually have a couple videos. You can click on the link above and, and take a look at those um, where I kind of talked myself out of what I'm discussing right now with these paleo shorelines. Um, because of because of the valley system that's in that area. Um, but I kind of did myself a disservice by not following through on it uh, until now. And uh, sure enough, you know what I what I originally thought with those 
videos with the Del Marva Peninsula, um, I'm I'm finding all up and down the East Coast. Uh, and again, this would suggest that the Carolina Bays had have to be older than 400,000 years, but younger than a million years. Uh, and that's that's a big clue. That's a big hint. Now, as I have mentioned to a few people online, uh, you know, this doesn't hurt the Younger Dryas Impact event. This can can actually help it. If we can remove the Carolina Bays as being part of that, then it can help draw the focus into the actual impact event itself. And, and now we would be looking at two separate events, um, which, again, could be even even a bigger deal than than combining them and confusing things. So anyways, guys, I just want you to I, I know this isn't a isn't a popular topic, but, uh, you know, hear me out. Uh, take a look at these things for yourselves. Um, and, and if we can kind of help clarify things, that's what it's all about. Again, I've been saying from the very beginning that, um, you know, whether we prove that the Carolina Bays are part of the Younger Dryas or we prove that they're not, it's the same. It's this, you know, it's the same to me and to, to everybody else. It only helps strengthen the science of these events. And, um, yeah, you know, thanks for watching guys. Like I said, I'll have a couple other videos in the future that, that look at a couple other areas that are discussing this specific topic. Uh, if you have any insight, uh, if you have any questions or, or comments, you know, please leave them in, in the comment section below and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.